Inside the throat, the larynx is covered by the epiglottis. Like the lid of a garbage can to prevent food from entering the airway, the epiglottis is made of elastic cartilage, allowing it to have some flexibility while still forming the paddle-like structure to cover the larynx portion of the airway. The other structures of the larynx are made of hyaline cartilage, which is stronger and more rigid. The largest hyaline cartilage structure is the thyroid cartilage that makes up our Adam's apple and is shaped like the bow of a ship or a plow. It has a prominent anterior ridge and it flares back on either side, but does not continue around to the back. This is much larger in men to accommodate the differences in vocal cord length and thickness when compared to women. The cricoid cartilage is just under the thyroid cartilage and it completely encircles the airway, acting as a connector to the trachea below. Sitting on top of the back of the cricoid cartilage are the paired arytenoid cartilages. These are important for sound production as they hold our true vocal cords in place and can pivot when pulled on by muscles to change the pitch. The arytenoid cartilages are capped by corniculate cartilages. When viewed with the connective tissue and muscles, you can see the bump of the corniculate cartilages and the adjacent cuneiform cartilages. On the surface of a neck with the chin stretched upward, you can palpate the hyoid bone just under the jaw. The thyroid cartilage is the most prominent bump, with a smaller bump representing the cricoid cartilage. A paramedic can create an emergency airway by inserting a tube between the thyroid and cricoid cartilages. This is called a cricothyroidotomy. Within the larynx are the vocal cords. They extend from the inside of the thyroid cartilage posteriorly to the arytenoid cartilages. There are a number of muscles that attach to the paired cartilages in the posterior larynx which pull or loosen the vocal cords. Movement of the cords changes pitch in the voice like pinching the open end of an inflated untied balloon and letting the air out. The vocal cords in males are longer and thicker than females which give men deeper voices. The trachea begins at the base of the cricoid cartilage. The trachea is marked by a series of hyaline cartilage rings that maintain the open pipe for air to travel. You can feel your own trachea in your throat. It feels ridged like feeling the ridges within cardboard. On the posterior surface of the trachea, the cartilage rings do not meet. This area, not bound by cartilage, allows for the adjacent esophagus to expand when a bolus of food travels down to the stomach. The trachea continues from the neck to the thoracic cavity until the split into the right and left primary bronchioles. The right and left primary bronchi enter each lung respectively. The right primary bronchus is straighter and wider compared to the left. This characteristic makes the right primary bronchus a more likely location for an inhaled object to be lodged, such as a marble inhaled by a child. The left primary bronchus is slightly arched to accommodate the heart. Bronchioles continue to divide into smaller and smaller tubes serving the entire expanse of the lungs until they reach the terminal bronchioles. The terminal bronchioles are the last bronchial segment leading to the gas exchanging alveoli. Bronchioles vary in their components as seen on a microscope slide depending on its size. Larger bronchioles have more hyaline cartilage to maintain the open air pathways and are lined with a pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelial tissue with goblet cells to trap and remove airborne debris. As the bronchioles get smaller, more smooth muscle can be found, making them reactive where they can dilate or constrict. The small to medium bronchioles are the target for asthma medications preventing smooth muscle constriction. The smallest bronchioles have little or no hyaline cartilage or goblet cells. The alveoli are where gas exchange can take place, which is the whole purpose of the respiratory system. The alveoli are tiny air sacs surrounded by a sheet of blood to maximize the exposure of the blood to the air so that oxygen can load onto the red blood cells and carbon dioxide can move from the blood plasma to the alveoli and leave the body. The oxygen and carbon dioxide only has to cross two thin, simple squamous epithelial cells, one making up the alveoli and one making up the capillary wall. This short distance, which is thinner than a piece of paper, is optimal for diffusion of gases to take place. 
the round shape of the alveoli like grapes surrounded by the capillary sheet like the skin on a grape provide maximal surface area for gas exchange to take place. The millions of tiny air sacs allow for extensive exposure of blood to air. In people with emphysema, alveoli walls are damaged, making large open spaces, reducing the membrane area for blood to travel, which reduces the area for gas exchange to take place. This makes it more difficult for an emphysema patient to get their blood adequately oxygenated. Alveoli are made of simple squamous epithelial cells. Think of a soccer ball, referred to as type 1 cells. Type 2 cells are specific to making and excreting a substance called surfactant. Surfactant is a detergent that reduces the surface tension of water. This reduces the force exerted on the alveoli walls to come inward by the high water content or humidity. Water wants to bond together. Imagine water droplets on opposite walls of an alveoli pulling together like a magnet, collapsing the alveoli. In the case of a premature infant born without sufficient surfactant, the closed alveoli are hard to inflate and open due to the strong forces of water holding the alveoli closed. Allowing that infant to inhale the aerosol surfactant will reduce those forces between the water molecules and make opening and maintaining open alveoli much easier.